Hugo Mungara and Mike Jenga indeed. In studio tonight we have Ahmed Ishaq Hassan, who is the chairman of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Uh, like you say, is it the toughest job on earth? Uh, it's the first time, of course, he's going to talk about the general election in Kenya, because I believe <laughs> you've talked about yeah. it in uh, other countries. In Washington and uh, London, yeah. I don't know, I don't know why yes. you didn't see it. It's important to, st to first talk about it yes. in Kenya, but thank you very much for making time for us. How do you rate, my first question to you, how do you rate IEBC's performance in the last general election, personally? Personally, above average. Meaning what? So could be there were problems? Yes, of course there were challenges that were seen by everybody, including the, the failure of uh, electronic voter identification devices, the result transmission system. But overall, and as, uh, like I said during the election, uh, those uh, failures uh, did not affect the integrity of the election results. And the elections were peaceful, they were credible, they were free and fair. All the observers who came, both the domestic and international, gave the uh, elections a clean bill of health. Of course, they did uh, not uh, those uh, failures. But overall, I think the commission did a good job. And uh, the members of staff of IBC did uh, a wonderful job under very extreme circumstances. I think we should be very glad that we have such a very highly trained and professional staff across the country. Mm -hmm. yes. why, why, why then? Why did we have such failures, especially electronic voter identification system? I've said, you know, the, the, the difficulty we had with the, this new device was that uh, it was being tested for the first time in a general election. We didn't do, for example, uh, a pilot uh, test for these devices. Uh, you did devices. do? We you didn't. Did do? We did not do. You did not do? Yes. Why? So we, there was no time. As you recall, the IBC was working within a very congested electoral calendar. The time was very short. There was so much to be done in a very short time. Uh, and so when mm -hmm. these equipments arrived, even late, some of them, they were deployed to the field. And some of them were not charged properly. Others, uh, uh, the staff were not trained properly. And after the general election, we had other by-elections where they were all deployed and they worked very well. But, but so w wasn't, was it right then? Was it right if you're saying some of the staff were not trained properly? You did not do a pilot uh, you know, testing of the whole thing. Was it right to just go into the election like that? You are, after all, independent. Yes, we're independent. You could ask yes. for, more t for more time. If you recall, the election date was already fixed by, uh, by, the, by, the, by the High Court. That was a, it gave a judgment, and we fixed the date based on the High Court's ruling. But does it so th that doesn't mean you could not have had any avenues? Yes. If uh, you know it could have, you know, could have problems. We could have only extended the elections by two weeks, Hussein. There's no other uh, window for, for us. So you went, you went into this knowing we didn't, could be we didn't know at that time. We thought we had uh, planned very well. We thought everything was, was okay until elections are not perfect all over the world. You'll we'll always come up with the challenges. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, electronic voter identification uh, system was one of the problems. Yes. The registration itself, the register, yes. had problems. Mm. I don't know if that also is about training no, or I preparation. I, I, I disagree with you, Hussein. The register had no problem. The biometric voter registration worked very well. We registered more than 14 million people using the biometric voter uh, device. Mm. But we had people during the election day who couldn't find their names. There, have, there has been problems with the register, the IEBC register. Yes. There was that problem, wasn't there? There were only 39,000 people whose biometrics, 36,000 people whose biometrics were not captured in the, in the BVR. And those ones, their names were printed out, and each polling station had an, a list of those uh, names. Plus, if you are found not in the BVR register, you could still be checked in the primary book, which was the green book. Mm -hmm. But there, so you're saying there was no other I problem? Don't think I don't think you had any yes. voter being turned away during the fourth March general election. Being there, turned there away for There were such problems yes. in the media. We, could have, we saw them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you will agree with me because you're also saying your assessment is that it was above yeah, average. average. And even in the Supreme Court hearing, there were problems, and it was said even the register had problems, but not yes. uh, major enough no. to call for uh, the presidential election to be done again, mm. to, to be redone. Yes. There were problems with the register. Yes, I, I why, why was that? Was, that? was there a lack of preparation or? You see, we did uh, the voter registrations within 30 days. We registered Kenyans, 14.3 million people within 30 days. Mm. And this data has to be collected from all over the country, 
and put into uh, into one uh, uh, one data and prepare a register, and then again send it back to the to the field for inspection before you could again do the final uh, certification. Mm. So the process of uh, like I said, it was time. Again, time. Time, yes. And again, you could have asked. You yes. still had the avenue to ask for more time. Only as an independent weeks. commission. Yes. Okay, what about the problem with uh, electronic uh, transmission? What the, the results transmission? The results transmission. What the, result, the results transmission, we had used uh, this system for almost uh, two years uh, during IIEC, Interim Independent Electric Commission. We tested it. We deployed during uh, South Mugerango, Matuga, all the by-elections. We did successfully all those by-elections, and they were all provisional results. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, I said, all results officially were being declared by the Italian officers when they received the paper, physical, the yeah. physical results. Yeah. These were provisional intended to enhance the transparency and integrity of the elections. So we were testing this through the by-elections, through the referendum, and it all worked very well. In fact, during the last uh, months of the, before the referendum, we were doing actually by 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m., you could see the results. Mm. Now come general election, we were now reporting six election results. The system had used only one election result, whether it's a by-election or a referendum. But now you were transmitting six results. And so the scope of the, of the data management had grown very big. Again, mm. didn't you prepare for that? Yes. Because you're saying you tested this during the by-election. Yes. Because it wasn't, uh, you know, six pallet, like yes. during the general yeah. election. Mm. Didn't you prepare for the six pallet? Was there any testing that was done? Yes, uh, we, were uh, we were told testing was done by the IT department. But you not did, you, did you confirm? You're saying you were told. Did you confirm? During the simulation, you know, a week before the election, we had uh, a simulation of the election, where we, we conducted elections in all the 1450 county assembly wards. And so this was also meant to give us a, a, a view of how the result transmission will work. It did not work. It were they were able to, to receive the results, but they could not display. So it was still a system being, being uh, refined as we went to the elections. Was it, then, was it then wise to go into that election if you know that system uh, was we like that? We was it really sure. refined? And you're saying yourself that system uh, was important to enhance transparency. Yes. Was it wise for you to do that? We, we, we had no, no, no doubt in our mind that uh, it was going to fail. We were assured by uh, all our officers who were working on the system and the consultants that the system was going to work for the elections. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's look at some of the you know, amounts that were used to procure like the BVR identification yes. and the BVR kits. Uh, over six billion, I believe, was used for that. Yes, 6.8 billion. 6.8 billion shillings. Mm. Doesn't it bother your conscience? that this thing failed and such a colossal amount of money was used to procure them. Again, again, let me again correct you, please. The biometric voter registration did not fail. Identification, that's what I'm talking about. That's not 6.8 billion. That was uh, about 1.2 billion shillings. Okay, and it never failed. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, it worked only 40%. And now it's able to be deployed when it's fully charged. When the laptop is charged, when the kids are charged, when they're deployed properly, they are used. We are using in, in Makweni. They were used in uh, in uh, Korea. Mm. They were used in uh, in Samburu, and they have worked. So it was time to train, to be able to charge the, the laptops, to be able to deploy in good time, and do the logistical work. It's not a waste, as I was saying. Mm. Yes. IBC, I'm sure, had uh, people in charge of all these things mm. that failed. That yes. you agree failed uh, during the elections. Uh, why are we not seeing any heads rolling? Is there anybody taking responsibility? Some are asking, why should, should we see some people in the IBC resigning? Because these things failed and money was used. Again, uh, we are now doing uh, internal uh, and uh, external uh, evaluation of the elections system. Both how we have um, uh, done the election as a, as a commission, how the staff uh, uh, did their work, how our own process worked. And so this post-election evaluation will reveal all, this, all the weaknesses. You cannot just condemn uh, officers just because of uh, a system failure at the time of general elections. There may have been other factors that caused these failures. So the, this post-election evaluation is meant to reveal all this uh, before you can say, okay, this is, this is a person to blame and you should go. 
Um, have you yourself or any of your commissioners of the leadership there been summoned by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission because I'm sure there was an investigation going on about the, B the, B the BVR uh, procurement? Yes, the, commission, uh, the commissioners have gone to uh, Ethics and Anti-Corruption, not summoned. They have been requested to go and uh, explain uh, uh, themselves about a uh, particular procurement on the, on the BVR mm -hmm. and other uh, policy, policy uh, decisions we have made. Uh, members of staff have gone there, the from the CEO, directors. And we, uh, uh, like we said, uh, when we, this order was made, we are cooperating fully with all investigating uh, agencies of the government to ensure that we give them every document, every statement they require to be able to conclude the investigations. You're saying you're doing uh, internal audits? Yes. And audits of, of how uh, systems failed. Mm. Uh, just to take you back to that, when are we expecting to hear from you on that? Or when will it be concluded? Post-elections, evaluations uh, don't uh, take a week or two weeks. You are de dealing with uh, an entire election process being evaluated from the, the recruitment of the staff all the way to the election and post-election uh, uh, the result management. And so, like I said during my interview with this uh, in, in Naivasha, we're looking at three to six months. It's not something which we just all of a sudden finish and do it within two weeks. So it will take some time. And we also require to have the input of other stakeholders. We need to uh, Im uh, Im involve the, the, the media, the civil society, the political parties, the presiding officers who work for the commission, the voters, and ask the, uh, all of them about the election process and get their feedback prepare a report, call for a national workshop, and have this validated before it's presented to Parliament and the President. If the investigations uh, find you culpable, although I'm not sure which investigations, because the, I, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission is supposed to look at the BVR procurement, yes. and the other investigations is being done by IBC itself. Mm. So I don't know if the IBC is capable of finding IBC commissioners, and even the chairman, yes. culpable or bearing responsibility. Yeah. But if that happens from you and the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, are you willing to resign? Yes, I'm willing to resign. But the premise of your question is that we have, we have done something wrong. I said if. Yes. If you have. I can assure you, what is, has kept the Commission united is the truth. We have faithfully observed our obligations under the law. The Supreme Court confirmed that we conducted an election in accordance with the Constitution and the law. So. I don't know why m people have to assume that uh, we, were, we did something wrong as a, as a commission. We did not do anything wrong with as a commission. But you agree and you've, you, we've, we've said right now, you've, to you've told me there were problems, yes. there were challenges, yes. and there were failures. Mm. So I'll ask you again, just for the record, yes. do you believe the elections were free, fair, and credible? And if you had a chance, uh, in hindsight, would you have done it differently? I believe the elections were credible, they were free and fair. I believe myself as chairperson and all members of staff and the commissioners believe that. I believe the election process was, was, uh, was credible, it was transparent. I accept that there were challenges, there were failures. But like I said, this did not have any effect on the integrity of the results that were announced. So if you had a chance, would you do it differently? I think if we had a chance to do it differently, we'll, yes, we'll, we'll look at how to deploy technology, one. Number two, we'll have to manage public expectations. I think we had given a lot of promise and, and expectation that we are going to deliver so much. And that, that's why the level of confidence in the commission was very high. And because people also uh, somehow equated a free and fair election with technology. And so I think in, in hindsight, maybe we shall have uh, staggered the, the, the use of technology. We used three technologies within a, a, a spread of 16 months. That I think was uh, very ambitious, mm. yeah. Code we've seen are now calling for IBC to, disband, to be disbanded or reforms in the IBC and saying you, the IBC is colluding with Jubilee Coalition yes. to frustrate the court coalition, what do you have to say to them? IBC is an, uh, is an impartial arbiter. Our job was to conduct an election. Political parties were contesting the elections. Ours was to do the elections, 
count the votes and declare the winners. All over the country, elections were held for governors, for senators, members of parliament, county assembly. Everything else has been accepted. It's only that a challenge is on the presidential election results. But we have a lot of petitions. Yes. And you were on the record one day when you said, uh, somewhere in Pan-Africa Hotel, yes. you said you are happy uh, because so far you only have about 30 petitions. Yeah. Now there are over 100. 164. Petitions. Does that less reflect than very well on the Less, less than 10%. Of the of the of the number of seats which are contested, 1,882 seats were contested, and only 164 are being uh, challenged in the in the high court. You don't think that is no, that reflects not reflects No, it, it doesn't. That is people. This allows people to ventilate. If you are unhappy with the decision of the commission or a retiring officer, you have a right to file a petition. That's why we have got the rule of law. That's why we have got courts, and that's why we have got election courts. It's only it's only those who believe in the rule of law. Who will say that we are going to take this thing to, uh, to a court of law? Mm -hmm. And let's so go back to the yeah. Let's go back to, go to, back to your question. Yeah. I think it is not uh, a good thing to be disbanding institutions uh, every every five years or uh, after every elections, especially an election commission. You need the the commission to have institutional memory, to gain experience, and to grow. ECK was uh, was disbanded in two in two eight. IEC was uh, set up in uh, 2009, of which I was chairman. In November 2011, all the commissioners were replaced. We had new commissioners come in as IBC, except myself as a chairman. Again, it was a new uh, commission which came into office. And this uh, commission was barely 16 months old when it conducted the general elections. And with the, within those 16 months, it did a good job uh, doing boundary delimitation, doing voter registration, doing voter education, uh, introducing these three new technologies. So I think I, I, I would like to urge our political leadership to, to give institutions the space to grow and to allow the independent institutions which are set up in the, in the, in the, in the Constitution to have their independence. Mm -hmm. This uh, uh, holding out of office of, uh, of, the, of, co of commission members will not help the country. For the, for the future of this country, institutions must be allowed to grow. And I don't agree with that proposal myself. Some may agree with you, but then you also agree that IBC is very different, or an electoral body in any country is yes. very different. It's the foundation of democracy. Yeah. You cannot afford not to be right. Mm -hmm. I accept that. It's a foundation of democracy, and the electoral election management body is a cornerstone of that uh, 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 democracy. You must satisfy. Yes. Everybody, you know, as much as, as as much as that sounds very hard, <laughs> you must satisfy everybody. When you d when you conduct an election and you announce a result, obviously, uh, Hussein, somebody will be unhappy with the results, and another person will be happy with it. You can't satisfy everybody. It's only that these people must accept to follow the rule of law. There are dispute resolution mechanisms. If you find faults, there are courts of law to, ch to challenge. That's all we're asking for. Why, uh, why has, uh, has not IABC, because this is what court has been saying, they've been talking about uh, the, 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 the results of the general election, not stalling in yes. the end yes. to what you gave. Yes. Why hasn't IABC published the final uh, tally of the last general election? The law requires you to do that in 14 days? No, they are required to be published immediately, all results. And so they, were, they, they, were, they were declared. That's why we have got Senate, we have got members of parliament, we have governors. You are supposed they to publish it in a, uh, through a Gazette notice so that every no Kenyan can look at it. There's no requirement. There's no legal requirement. I, I, I'm, I'm sure a commissioner was here and he told you that. There's the no legal requirement in the law. The commissioner but for purposes of uh, transparency, we are doing that. The commissioner said mm. they ha you have done that already. Yes. You haven't done it, have you? We have gazetted all the winners of the election. But you haven't published the results the of result, the election? No, no. But the commissioner said you, you published. Yes. We published the winners of the election. Uh, so what is going to be published in September, as he said? I don't think there's a, uh, I think he was uh, not uh, correct in that. I, I want to correct that uh, the results of the general election now for presidential, but uh, by the way, Presidential has already been published. It has been on our, on our website. Everybody has it. 
So, all so the results in all the polling stations yeah. have been demolished. Are you saying then that not you're not going IBC is not going to publish any because you're not uh, mandated? Th today to I was it. summoned by Parliament, mm -hmm. uh, the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, and uh, they asked for the results. We are promised to supply to Parliament uh, on Thursday at 10, 10 o'clock. So we'll do that. Will you publish it? Yes. For we'll the whole country we'll to see? That, yeah. Because the thing is, when court keeps claiming all these things, mm. or not only court, whoever claims these things, and uh, we don't see it, or Kenyans don't see it, uh, the, 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 the results being published, you kind of give credence to yes. what they're saying. You see, we, cannot, uh, we are not politicians. We don't have to respond to every, every political rally uh, statement made by politicians. Our job was to run an election. And I think, yes, it has, it has delayed. We, sh we should have published the results, actually, the same time we published the result for the presidential elections. But now, like I said, because political parties require these results to be able to share out money allocated to them under the political parties fund, we are now going to publish each election for president, for governor, for senator, women rep, member of parliament, and county assembly. Mm -hmm. And you will know how, how, uh, how many votes each party uh, got in all those elections. And that is going to be published in, a, in, the, in, the, in the media, in our website, and also in the Kenya Gazette. Some have been asking, are there divisions? And, in the, yeah. and I want to make uh, one thing very clear. Yeah. There's no one million vote uh, difference. That is one naked lie which has, which has traveled all over the world. It's being quoted even in the international media. And that's a lie which has been repeated over and over again. It's not there. If it was there, 90 days after elections, 100 days after elections, somebody will have come up with some evidence. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence, mm -hmm. just allegations, allegations. Some have been saying, uh, critics have been saying there are divisions in the IEBC. And a case in point, if uh, I may take you back to that, is the current case going on, uh, pitting Kathy Kilonzo, uh, who wants to vie for the McQueen Senate seat. Uh, you said on TV that uh, you learned of her acknowledging slip that was stolen, or allegedly stolen. You learned about it during the hearing. Yes. How come? It Were was you not briefed by your... That, that information w became available that morning by to the secretary. And the secretary did not have time to inform the commissioners about uh, that particular development. So it was something which was being investigated even as, even as they were going to court. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I know it, it looks uh, very bad from uh, looking from outside. But uh, I, was, I was just being honest to the, to the, to the journalist who called me, or, uh, who told me, are you aware about this, the loss? And I said, no, I don't. So when, it, yeah, it when did, okay, well, before the hearing yes. of the tribunal, when did IBC find out that this acknowledgement slip, like IBC says, has been stolen? I think it was, it was discovered the, 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 the day before the, the tribunal sat. That information was, became known to the, you know, we have a secretariat. Mm -hmm. We have the CEO and directors who, who are able to do this uh, activity and generate a report. It's only after the, the CEO uh, notifies the commission about this development that we can, we can now say we are says of the matter. But at the time, it was a continuing investigation. They kept on getting more and more information as they, as they went along the, the investigation. So I will not even blame uh, the secretary for not informing the commission because there was no time enough to convene a meeting and inform us. So it was li you're linking it to the hearing? Yes. So it's during the hearing is when yeah. that information was yes. found out? Yes. Again, I'll ask you what I asked uh, the former commissioner, Mohamed al who was here. Plus now that issue. Are you then saying that if it was not for that hearing to unearth all this, yes. you would not have known an acknowledgement slip was stolen according to IBC, and you would not have known, according to IBC again, because this case is in court, according to IBC, you would not have known that Kathy Kilonzo is not a registered voter, and she would have gone ahead and participated in the by-election. No, because the returning officer gave a conditional uh, clearance. He said, I'm giving you clearance because I can't find your name in any of the registers except maybe in the two green books which are locked up in a... In, a in the high court. Yeah, in, no, in high court. Yeah. And the commission will have investigated that anyway. But the, 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 if, if, I, if I can quote Salat Bor what he said, mm. not verbatim, but what he said, and that is what I want to ask you. Do you yes. think he was right? Or they are, because it's not Salat Bor really, it's IEBC. Mm. Do you think IEBC was right 
to, in the first instance, issue that nomi nomination certificate because he said very clearly, I am issuing this nomination certificate knowing very well, uh, having gone through the whole three green books, mm. those two are held up at the high yes. court. And uh, if there's a problem, then there's an avenue through the IBC uh, Dispute Resolution Tribunal. That is, if mm. somebody appeals. So what if nobody appeals? If nobody appeals, still, uh, like I said, because of that particular situation, and he had explained, he had, he had given his uh, reasons for, for giving the, the certificate, and as he had given a caution, a caveat, that I have, this I have this difficulty. And the commission will still have investigated that particular card and come to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but you have to remember this, uh, Hussein, and this is something which you all have to know. We, returning of SAS once gazetted also become accountable to the law. They are returning of SAS for that elections. I don't, for example, I can't announce the winner for McQueenie elections. It is that returning of SAS. We have got 290 returning of SAS across the country. And during elections, they are all in charge mm -hmm. of the elec uh, elections. Mm -hmm. We have to run up uh, a bit fast because of time now. Uh, let's talk about those. Okay, do you think yourself uh, the confidence of IBC among Kenyans has gone down, has waned? I, I think that's, that's, that's possible. Uh, after the elections, they, I think the results has, uh, has divided the nation. It is possible, therefore, that uh, we, we have lost uh, support and confidence among certain uh, section mm. of, the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the population. If we can but quote, I believe for, exa yeah, if we can for example, quote uh, what Sinovit had in uh, February before elections, just before the election, 62% of Kenyans had a lot of confidence in IBC. Mm. Early this month, that is even before the Kathy yes. Kilonzo case, that had reduced by half mm -hmm. to 32%. Mm. And then still in February, only 2% had no confidence at all in IBC, meaning you had a lot of people with confidence. Now, 22% don't have confidence in IBC. Mm -hmm. What are you doing about it? And many are criticizing you and the IBC for operating in secrecy. Mm. You're not giving information and you're not talking to Kenyans. What are you doing about it? Because it's your responsibility to make sure every Kenyan has confidence in with the IBC. That's why Hussein, I'm here today. I agree with, I agree with that assessment that we have not been uh, coming uh, up to the, uh, after the election, especially after the elections. We have not engaged uh, with the public. We have not engaged with the media but or with, uh, with other stakeholders. I want to uh, uh, t tell you this, Hussein. At the time after the elections, if you, re if you recall, even I went to Pan-Africa uh, for that uh, forum of civil society, mm -hmm. the anger was, uh, the, the emotions were very high. You could not have a civil discussion with anybody. So uh, the, those who were ha unhappy with the results. I, I hope that uh, maybe we give it time and then we can now start having a, a, a conversation about the election process and the results. Mm -hmm. I, I agree that uh, we have not been robust enough to uh, respond to all the allegations, like the, the one million vote uh, difference that has been alleged. I know we could have said that this is not true, and we should have said that uh, early enough. It's a lesson we have learned. One thing I have seen is that we have left others to define us, and uh, that's something which uh, we have to change. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, part of the, of the change we're doing. We are calling for a breakfast meeting with the Editors Guild, with the with the media uh, the on Friday, we are going to start having meetings with the with the political parties and the civil society and all other stakeholders. We'll start engaging with the public. Mm -hmm. Yes. Two very quick final questions. Uh, do you believe you are in charge of the IBC? Yes, I am the chairman of the commission, and uh, to the to the best of my uh, my knowledge, I'm still the chairman. I'm in charge of the commission. With Why are you asking that question? Because yes. people have critics have really been talking yes. about divisions in the yes. IBC, and that was. I, don't, I can't say it's one of the reasons why mm -hmm. there's been uh, the Supreme Court ordered for uh, an investigation into the BVR procurement because it showed the divisions in the IBC. IBC is a big institution. We have got more than uh, 800 uh, members of staff. Of course, I, I can talk for about the, the nine commissioners, uh, myself and the eight commissioners. I can assure you, to the best of my knowledge, the commission is united. If there was you any can division, talk for the commissioners. What about the secretariat? I'm also, I'm of course, they, they, they are also members of our staff, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm the chairman of the commission. Okay. To the, to the best of my knowledge, there has been no division in the commission. There are, of course, differences of opinion on any matter, whether it's about procurement, whether it's about technology, on anything. Mm -hmm. That is a very healthy uh, debate in, in any institution. 
but you cannot say that's a, uh, that's a division. Mm. The institution still has the overall goal of making sure that uh, we deliver a credible election. Uh, Kenyans uh, are asking, and it's been a concern, are there clerks that have not been paid up to date by the IBC? No, all, all members of staff who work for the commission have been paid after Treasury released money to the commission, mm -hmm. I think two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I know there were a lot of uh, uh, two weeks cries. ago. Yeah, two weeks Why ago. Why the delay? It was money from Treasury. They, they delayed in uh, releasing money to the commission. How will you transmit the Makweni, uh, because Makweni by election is coming up soon? Will there be an electronic uh, transmission system yes. of the results? Because as uh, the last uh, thing we had was that Safaricom is not giving you that platform. How are you going to do it? We will, uh, le Safaricom, I have gone, uh, I've talked to uh, Bob Colimo. I met him with some commissioners. We had a very lengthy discussion and uh, he has given indication that uh, they will work with the commission if certain, uh, certain conditions are met by the commission. And we're working very hard to ensure that those conditions are met. And uh, the CEO is now, has been tasked to ensure that those uh, requirements by Safaricom are met. And so we hope that we'll go ahead and uh, launch and have the result transmission system both in McQueen and so also you're saying in you'll have it in the end? We'll have it you'll both limit the requirements they ask? Both the electronic voter identification will be deployed mm. and the result transmission. Yes. So finally, see. finally uh, with all the pressure that you've been going through as the IBC chair, has there been any moment that you've thought of giving up and just resigning? It is not uh, something which you can do as a public official uh, with this kind of sensitive job. I, I would have resigned if I knew I, was, I had failed mm -hmm. or I was to blame for something or I'm guilty of any. But my conscience is very clear that we did the best we could do in the circumstances. So I am not going to give up or give in. And you will see, yes, I'll, I'll, you'll see through I'll, your, I'll, your term. I, 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 I intend to see through my term. Well, thank you very yes. much, Ahmed Isak Hassan, uh, very candid, and thank you very much for making time for us. I'm sure it's been a long day and you're fasting. Thank you so much for thank your you. time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. And uh, I almost said Catherine, Mike and Kirigo, I'll take it back to you on that.